Hi guys and welcome to video three on the physical processes um, and the UK's physical landscape and I'm going to go over today the two main landscapes that are in the Edexcel textbook and that is on page 118 and 119 if you want to have a look at that as we go along and I'm going to be looking at the physical factors that are happening on these two landscapes because the geology is very different. So I'm going to start with the Lake District which is the first case study which is an upland landscape and as we have seen in the other two videos, this is an area of very hard rock, it's igneous and it's very resistant. So the type of physical process that happen on it are quite different to what's happening in the south and the southeast. So because the rock is very, very hard, we get rock fall. OK, it doesn't slump, it doesn't slide. We get rock fall and uh, we get a big mass movement. So we have a lot of freeze thaw in these areas. They tend to be quite upland areas. During the night time, the temperatures might be quite cold. Um, as we talked about before with those that physical weathering, water gets into any um, any gaps in the rock and breaks it open. And then we end up with, with rock fall and landslides. Um, so that, um, that's that's the, the things that happen up there. So if any rain gets into the um, rock as well, that will add weight to it. And so it will help with the rock fall and the landslides. Also up in the Lake District, we have what we call post-glacial river processes. So after the glaciers um, carved out those U-shaped valleys, if we remember, because the glaciers were very big and had a lot of energy and scoured the land and made these huge U-shaped valleys with very flat bottoms and, and steep sides. After that, obviously, because of the rainfall um, that occurred afterwards, we had a lot of water coming down the hills and down the mountains. And we've got um, rivers in the bottom of those U-shaped valleys. And they form meanders, um, etc., on the bottom of the river floor. floor. And um, we have um, a lot of silt and sediment deposited when these rivers overflow. And that makes the bottoms, the very wide flat bottoms of those valleys very, very fertile. And we get a lot of um, agriculture on it, which we'll explore in the next video. So they are the factors and the processes that are happening in upland areas. So it's hard to rock, it's a lot of freeze thaw, um, and it's a lot of mass movement. So very steep sided mountains, a lot of scree on the bottom, etc. And because it's hard rock, we get rock fall. Now, on the other side of that, and we're on page 119, we have um, the example in the book is the Weald. Now, the Weald is in the southeast. We've got the Downs as well, which are very similar um, in, here in Kent. So we've got the Weald and the southeast. Now, this is very what we call undulating relief. It's, it's hilly. It's not mountainous because the rock here, remember, is a lot softer. So we have hills. And what we have here is we, because of the uplift, because of the geological uplift that's happened, because the UK has been moved, remember what we talked about in the last video, the UK has been moved northwards um, during you know the last couple of million years because of plate tectonics. We have a lot of movement of rock strata. So if we imagine we have rocks in layers and ha as the area is pushed up, um, the land is pushed and buckled. So we end up with something called an anticline, which is a kind of... Um, this kind of shape okay so it was flat and then the plate tectonics kind of moved it and buckled it and we end up with an area that's called an anticline so this will be the hill quite a big hill and over time this has eroded down and down now what happens is the different layers of rock as it talks about in the book uh, are hard and soft so it might have a hard layer then a soft layer then a hard layer and a soft layer and as the top of the anticline um, as the top of the very very large hill that was there at one point is eroded you end up sticking up kind of this part of it here, or this part here, because this top it's gone, you end up with layers of hard and soft rock jutting out at an angle. So the hard rock will stay resistant, the softer rock will be eroded, so the softer rock's eroded down, the hard rock stays up. So you end up with these hills, kind of, and valleys. So these are called uh, scarps, the hills are called scarps, and that will be where the hard rock is protruding out of the ground. And then you end up with the valley, or the, the dip, okay, so scarp and dip. And you end up with soft rock, which is the valley, uh, or the dip, and the harder rock is the hill or the scarp. So that's what you end up, you end up with these undulating um, hills in the southeast. That's what uh, we have in Kent here on the Downs. This is what we have in the Weald as well, which is a bit further south, um, a bit further over from us, etc. And on these rocks we have, um, because it's quite a lot of chalk, we obviously have chemical weathering, 
of the chalk, which means it reacts to uh, slightly acidic rainwater. And we have biological weathering because we have a lot of vegetation here, obviously trees and shrubs and other plants because we're quite mild and we're quite low lands, low lying. So we have lots and lots of vegetation. So lots of uh, biological weathering here. Now, uh, I'm going to go over this with you. What happened uh, previously, we get a lot of what we call dry valleys. So what we had is chalk is porous, which means it allows water to soak through. So water runs through it. But during the ice age, which we've talked about before, although we didn't have ice sitting over here, it was frozen. OK, the ground was frozen because it was very, very cold around the glacier, what we call periglacial. So the ground was frozen. So any water that did run out from the glacier um, ran and eroded uh, a river valley, essentially. But the river, because the ground was frozen, the water, obviously, because chalk is porous, the water couldn't infiltrate and go in because the ground underneath was frozen because it was sitting around a glacier. So the river valleys formed and meanders formed, etc. and river channels formed. And then what happened when the glacier melted was that the ground also melted. Now, you know about frozen ground because you've looked at permafrost when you've looked at the tundra area. So we've got an idea of what this is that we've got around the Arctic. We have the zone to the south of the Arctic, which is the tundra, which is most of the year anyway, the ground is permanently frozen and water, remember, can't infiltrate into it, which is why it's quite boggy. So we had a similar thing here. We were we were the tundra, essentially, um, here in the southeast um, for the for the Arctic, as it were. That was a bit further north where the um, where the glaciers were. So any water that did flow out from underneath the glaciers, because it did happen, we had little little rivers and little bits of water coming out of the glaciers um, all the time because of the pressure of the of the um, ice. So that ran down, that formed those these valleys and uh, maybe some river channels, etc. But like I said, when the glaciers melted, the permafrost melted as well in these areas south of the uh, glacier. And we ended up with... Um, what we call a dry valley. So we ended up with these river channels and there's no water in them now. So um, that happened um, in the southeast and what we end up with is remnants of this, of this old landscape, of these old processes and uh, we end up with these dry valleys in, in chalk areas because any rain that falls now will infiltrate into the ground because chalk is porous. So a lot of these areas we don't get surface rivers um, it's quite difficult because the water just soaks in. We tend to get rivers where we've got less permeable rock, so um, clay, etc. Um, so that's what we have here. And the, the other thing, obviously, we talked about this before, the other process that happens in a low line area is soil creep. So remember what we said, we don't have rock fall because the rocks aren't hard. We have soil creep because the rocks are quite soft. And so um, under the um, under gravity, the, the uh, soil and the land kind of slowly just just creeps down very, very slowly. can go a little bit faster um, if it's very heavy rainfall, etc. But overall, uh, we have soil creep. So they're the two different types of physical processes that are happening in these two different areas. And that section, it does say that um, uh, upland and lowland landscapes result from different physical factors. So the different factors are because of the different rock type and they produce different kind of scenery. So I'm hoping that this helps because it's a little bit of a trickier bit of the course. But um, in the actual exam, you'll be asked only maybe two and four markers on this. So it shouldn't be too difficult. Just try and remember harder rock to the north and we had rockfall and um, mass movement and freeze thaw, etc and highland. And in the south and the east, we have softer rock. So we have more undulating um, relief and we have things like uh, biological weathering and chemical weathering happening here and soil creep. So I hope that's clear.